inside a volcano may seem like the perfect place to stage your supervillain schemes, but inside of here may be the worst possible place for your base. Let's get technical. Oh! Every good supervillain, which we're not, needs a good hideout, one that's just as evil as they are. Volcanoes are ominous, dangerous, and awesome cool, no doubt why we've seen them used as supervillain bases across popular culture. But while volcanoes might be the best choice for a base in terms of style, I contend that they are the absolute worst choice in terms of actually engineering a lair. And yes, I'm including moon bases in that calculation. And to tackle this trope, we will be working with legendary nerd engineer XKCD, as his new book, How To, available now, was my nerdy inspiration for this episode. And definitely not any contracting work we've been doing for supervillains, right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't pay amazing with benefits, laser benefits. First, what is a volcano? Simply put, a volcano is just a rupture in the crust of a planet mass object, or at least an object with enough mass to create internal planet-like stresses that create ash, gas, and lava that can eventually escape these ruptures. These crust cracks, or planet pimples as no one calls them, way easy, easy come in many forms, but I think the most common depiction of them in supervillain media is the stratovolcano or the composite volcano. Their compositeness comes from how they are formed. Lava comes out of these ruptures and ash settles on top of each other and cools in these differing layers forming the stratification of the stratovolcano. Now, where would our layer go? Again, I think the most common depiction is to have your base inside of an active stratovolcano. And this is where we run into our first major problem, the lava. Oh, run, stick man, save your sticky body. Lava, when molten rock is outside of a volcano or magma when it's inside is extremely dangerous. Glowing orange at up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, lava can melt, burn, and otherwise destroy pretty much anything that stands in its way, and it's also deceptively strong. You probably already know that just a few inches of flowing water can pick up cars and people and wash them away. Well, lava is three times denser than water, and so diverting it or otherwise deflecting it is much harder, if not basically impossible. Concrete will float on lava, it's so dense. It's nigh unstoppable. Oh, and with this temperature, we really shouldn't be this close to- ah! My point being that active volcanoes are active and stratovolcanoes don't just perfectly pump magma up and out. Inside a volcano, magma is constantly carving new pathways through ash and rock, forming new dikes, as they're called, and parasitic cones. If you're a supervillain in this position, you are going to need extensive and extreme engineering to get around the ever-present and money-draining threat of liquid hot magma, like monumental heating and cooling systems pumping in air and water, or else you might end up... Yeah. Dealing with lethal lava is bad enough, but what's inside the lava might be even worse. From a safe distance, even very active volcanoes can look peaceful, beautiful. It's not until you're right up next to them that you realize that the air they're spewing out isn't harmless. It's hot death. Continuously bubbling up from Earth's interior is a chemical cloud of mostly carbon dioxide and water vapor, but with a chemical tinge of sulfur dioxide, hydrofluoric, and hydrochloric acid. You do not want to breathe this stuff. No, really. Ash and lava and explosive eruptions are obviously the most dangerous thing that volcanoes do, but in the last century, volcanic gases have accounted for a small percentage of volcano-related human fatalities through asphyxiation and corrosion. When volcanic gases enter the atmosphere and mix with water and the particulates therein, they can form acid rain and fog. 
Volcanoes are the main natural source of corrosive rain, and this particular precipitation can be very damaging. Acid rain falling near volcanoes has been known to wipe out all the vegetation in the area, and the acid mist that floats down from volcanoes has been known to severe... <laughs> <laughs> severely irritate the eyes <laughs> and the lungs of everyone <laughs> in the area. Just imagine how much hazard pay a supervillain would have to shell out as hench people inhaled <laughs> ah, burning fog. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it does. The highly acidic nature of volcanoes means that actually constructing a layer here is gonna be a real hassle. We know from our efforts to scientifically categorize and observe these geologic structures that even stainless steel objects are quickly eaten and corroded away. A real volcano layer then would need never ending repair and replacement as acid ate away at it. And because of the volcanic gases, you might wanna build this layer airtight and need to pump in air and other materials from the outside or else inside you oh he was already on fire i mean i would he... as if the lava and the acid gas weren't bad enough there's still volcanic lightning Volcanic lightning, seriously? They're still, no, oh, jeez. An active volcano isn't what you'd call a stable place. So much is flowing and moving and changing and in hazardous ways. On the outside, you have to deal with unstoppable and unpredictable mudslides and pyroclastic flows, the latter of which can race down acidic slopes at 430 miles per hour with temperatures in the thousands of degrees. The power of something like this really can't be overstated. Here is a picture of the remnants of a building left over from the pyroclastic flows after the El Chichon eruption in Mexico in 1982. And yes, those are concrete reinforcement rods bent like tree branches, like they weren't even there. Good luck engineering around something like that. And then there's the lightning. Inside a volcano's ash plume, little bits of ash and rock and sometimes ice are tumbling around and colliding. And as they do so, they can build up huge static charges. And when these charges equalize, you get volcanic lightning. I will admit that these dirty thunderstorms, as they're sometimes called, would make your volcano lair look awesome and ominous, but just think about contending with these kinds of events when you are transporting materials and equipment like death rays around, or when you want to broadcast your evil schemes to the world and need a lot of reception. I mean, you could just talk. And finally, there are the earthquakes. An active volcano is defined by the movement of liquid hot magma. And because this molten stone is under high pressure and so heavy, this movement is not gentle. As magma moves around underneath a volcano, giant chambers can form and then collapse and rocks can crack and this can cause seismic activity that shakes the entire area. All of this movement could easily destroy and disrupt sensitive supervillain equipment and plans. Of course, a supervillain could use this seismic activity to better predict what the volcano was going to do, but it's still essentially unpredictable. Does any of this sound like a good place for a base? No! Oh. It's, it's unpredictable. I don't know when it's gonna go. Volcano layers are a terrible idea. They would require sustained support under a persistent threat of earthquakes, acid, lava, and lightning. They would require highly specialized systems and engineering to deliver air, food, even water to you. Oh, and yeah, a single eruption, which is unpredictable, would completely obliterate you. The cost of building this base would be the real supervillain, and good luck finding hench people who are willing to staff up a location that's more dangerous than living in space. Because science... Oh, oh it's unpredictable. Ah!
Huge thanks to Randall Monroe of XKCD for helping me out and emailing back and forth with me for this episode. He's an incredibly smart guy. I love all of his work. You can get his book, How To, uh, wherever books are sold right now. And I also recommend Thing Explainer and What If. He is the er nerd. And uh, I love everything that he does. And I hope you like this episode. And now you know that you shouldn't drill into a lava place if you didn't already.